Hi, I am Hannah Dumont. I'm an educational psychologist from the German Institute for International Educational Research in Berlin and Germany. And in my research, I study um, educational inequalities, and I'm mostly interested in the processes and mechanisms that underlie um, these inequalities. Um, so we know that, and this has actually been um, a finding that's most consistent, that has been maybe the most consistent finding coming out of educational research over the past 50 years, that kids from lower socioeconomic backgrounds do not perform as well in school as kids from high socioeconomic backgrounds. So at the end of schooling, we are faced with the problem that a large number of kids actually leave school with not having the kind of competencies needed to actively participate in society and also not having the competencies to find a job. So, um, so what to do about this? Um, in, in the past, um, educational systems have typically um, used what is called tracking, meaning that you group students based on the kind of abilities and competencies they bring into school. So you group students into different classrooms or different school, uh, track them into different um, um, groups within or between schools. What's, uh, while this seems as a very legitimate and efficient way to organize um, schooling, um, there's a lot of research showing that countries with higher uh, tracking or more rigid forms of tracking, that they actually have higher levels of inequality than those that have more comprehensive school systems. So, um, and so there's kind of like a debate going on that we have to move away from structures more into the classroom level. And so there are a number of educational psychologists who have argued for a concept called adaptive teaching. So this means that instead of grouping students, you would actually have a heterogeneous classroom and teachers are um, responding to student differences on the fly from moment to moment during um, the classroom instruction. And so while there's quite a lot of theoretical work on this um, concept, we don't have as much empirical evidence on if it actually affects student achievement. And so, um, well, from kind of um, anecdotal evidence that um, I saw, I you know, working with schools, um, I could see that the kind of classroom setup is very different in these kind of schools than what we usually are experienced in our own school life. So they use a lot of mixed ability grouping, a lot of kind of um, peer tutoring, um, individualized instruction. And so um, the question is how to actually measure um, the degree of adaptivity. And so in a very recent work that I, I just started, um, I tried to develop an instrument using tablets um, inside classrooms where students are asked to respond to um, a number of questions after each lesson over a course um, of a week. And so the idea is to kind of ask each student how was the lesson for you? How cognitively engaged were you? How interested was the lesson for you? And then to really kind of find those classrooms who are adaptive and then learn from them. And then try to understand what do the teachers do? What is, what, what is it that they do differently than like a regular classroom? And so hopefully in an ideal world, um, we not only can use these data to improve our our kind of research findings or to, to address our research uh, questions, but also to feed that information back into, into schools, to feed that information back to teachers so they can also improve um, their classroom instruction. So it's a win-win situation for both worlds. <laughs>